everybody. Welcome to Real Talk Podcast. It's me, Jay, your host, and I got my good friend here, uh, Danish. He's an Airbnb host and a coach, and he's also doing different high-ticket affiliate programs. But uh, Danish is from Chicago. Um, he's part of uh, the same network that I'm in, which is Credit Academy. Shout out to uh, Joey and the Credit Academy team. That's how Joey uh, and myself and Danish all connected. But nonetheless, Danish, what's up, my friend? How you doing, brother? Good, bro. It's going good. How about yourself? Pretty good. How's the weather out there in Chicago right now? Right now, summer, it's good. It's in the 70s, 80s, so it's uh, what you would call perfect weather for Chicago. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. Uh, I have uh, a lot of family members that are from there as well, who is also uh, business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, one of my, my cousins, he owns... Uh, one of the tattoo shops right there in downtown Chicago. And then my other cousin um, is the owner of four different automotive shops called Real Auto House out there. So I nice. uh, definitely had some love for Chicago. I used to go there often as a kid. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, man, let's let's talk about you. Uh, but uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for hopping on to this uh, episode. Um, and I just kind of want to highlight your experience, your background, and share your story, good and bad, and hopefully influence others who may be thinking about doing what you're doing in Airbnb or high ticket affiliate programs. So nonetheless, man, the floor is yours, Danish. Go ahead and man, let's talk about how you got started and just really your background and go from there. For sure, bro. I appreciate you having me on, but a little bit, you know, for people that might not know who I am, I'm 26 years old from Chicago, pretty much lived here most of my life. Um, I've been around business and entrepreneurship since I was like 17, 18 at, you know, my first business or what you can call a side hustle was with reselling stuff. Mainly I, I used to resell a lot of phones. So when I was 17, 18, 19, I was doing that very heavily, like pretty much full time. I was buying phones from Craigslist, selling it, usually like making double the profit. So my first like hundred thousand that I made in sales was through the, you know, just reselling phones. Um, and I was doing pretty good at that, just flipping, buying and reselling. Like, and I didn't have any shop or nothing. It was just Facebook, Craigslist. Craigslist was a lot more popular back then, like six years ago. Um, and I was doing that and making good money. Like I remember days I was seeing three, four or $500 profit as an 18, 19 year old. Um, but I was kind of helping out my dad. He was kind of going through a tough situation with his job. So at 18, 19, I was making good money, but a lot of my profit, I was giving it away, honestly, to my dad, because he was just going through like a little bit of a financial situation. And I, I didn't need money, right? Like I didn't, I wasn't paying rent or anything like that. So right. made good money from that. I um, was doing it for a couple of years, but it was a constant hustle, right? There's no systems involved with that. I had to go buy a phone, sell it. I had to be involved. It's not a proper business. Um, the way I was doing it with just reselling. So I eventually, you know, got introduced to different networks, got into pretty, pretty sure a lot of people know of network marketing companies. Um, one of the first companies I ever got involved with was an, a, a company called Amway. Um, Amway yeah. huge company. Um, did fairly decent. Like I was one of the top leaders as a young guy in my area. Um, but my biggest month after a year being in it was like $500. <laughs> so there was not, there wasn't money. It wasn't hard to make money there. Right. It taught me a lot. It was the first thing that introduced me to like self-development books and all that stuff. And it was cool, but in reality, I wasn't making money. So eventually I was like, all right, dude, screw this. I can't keep continuing to do this. I'm putting in way too much effort. I'm not seeing the fruits. Um, not that there wasn't potential there. I just realized like, it's not the best. It was not the best vehicle to be in. And then eventually I kind of got into other things. Um, got into different network marketing companies on the side. I was just doing different jobs or honestly never really had too many jobs, but I was, um, I started Ubering, started doing that a little bit. Cause I was like, I don't like having a boss. I don't like having someone tell me what to do. So Uber was kind of my next best option while I'm like still figuring out a business on the side. Gotcha. I was doing that. And then, um, pretty much got introduced to another, other network marketing companies got into like, I am trading Forex. Um, did that, I wouldn't say I had success, but it's not like I had failure. Like I made probably more than the average person there. Um, built a little team, got introduced to different networks, got around events where, you know, I met multimillionaires and stuff like that. So it, it widened my horizon of my network and just mentality, which was cool. Um, but I still didn't hit that 10 K month. Like I really wanted to. 
short story after that, I was very involved with crypto. Oh. I pretty much, um, I was making money. I learned about crypto first in 2017. That was probably the first time I ever bought crypto coins, but I bought it at the top. So I was late to the game, but there was a lot of hype being built around it. And I lost money and I was like, dude, I've seen other people make crazy money. What do I got to do? Started studying the market, started studying how the cycles work. And in 2019, I went pretty heavy into crypto. I put in thousands of dollars. Didn't have like, I wasn't making a lot of money, but had maybe five or 10K saved up. And I put 5,000 in different crypto altcoins, like XRP, different smaller coins that people have probably never even heard of. Right. Um, but I realized like Bitcoin is cool, but it's not, if you're playing with a couple of thousand, it's not going to make you too much money, right? Right. So I started studying the altcoin game pretty heavily. Um, and for short story, took like 5,000 to about 60, 70K in a portfolio, help multiple people make money. Had launched like my own uh, free group or channel with that and built that free Telegram channel to about seven, 800 members. I was just giving out people information, um, was helping a lot of people make money. There was, it was pretty crazy because I remember refreshing my screen and I would see days where I'm making as my, my, my fake screen, which is crypto <laughs> is going up seven, a thousand, two thousand dollars in a day. And I'm like, I was sitting in bed and it was just happening. So it was a cool facade while I had it. And I still believe in crypto. I'm not as involved at the moment, but, um, short story, short story that made me my first six figures I've ever made. And I was doing pretty well. Um, you know, at 23, 24, pretty much. And um, I thought I was doing well, right? If you have zero dollars in debt, you have nearly six figures in your bank or whether it was crypto um, and things were going pretty good for the most part. I was like, all right, I'm going to cash out. I started investing more. I didn't time the market the right way. And of course, just like most people went down quite a bit, <laughs> right. went down maybe 60, 70 percent. Um, I mean, I made some crazy plays on crypto. I remember taking Shiba from like, a five hundred dollar investment to twenty thousand cashed out. So wow. I've had some crazy plays inside the crypto market. I helped at that time when I was very active. I was, I was helping a lot of people make money. I eventually had launched like my own inner circle group for crypto, built that paid program to like 60, 70 members. Um so within like two months of doing that, because I was charging people between like about five hundred bucks to join that, where I was kind of coaching people more of like exactly the moves I was making with it. And within two, three months, I had about 60 plus people join that. So that probably made me around 20, 30K in a few months, along with the money I was making with crypto. So it was like probably my first month I've ever seen 30,000, <laughs> um, which to me was like, all right, that's pretty good money. But right. short story, things went down the fan, hit, hit different things that happened in my life and quite, pretty much lost a lot of everything I had <laughs> money wise. But I realized it was just money, right? Money is something that comes and goes. You can always get it back. It might put you down for the moment, but it's something you can always get back, right? The time is something we can't get back. Short story, got into, I was just looking for the right business. I was like, all right, well, crypto is cool, but as you get older, it's not something you want to be putting too much of your money into. Like, you don't want to put like 90% of your net worth like I was doing at, at a point. Um, of course, I was living with parents. So I, I could take risk, but I, was, right. I realized, okay, as I'm getting older, this is not something you control crypto markets or any market per se. You don't control it. So short story, I was looking into different businesses. What other things can I do? Because I knew I didn't really want to work a job. Um, and that's kind of where I came across. Number one, high ticket sales that a friend introduced me to. And then number two was Airbnb arbitrage. I always wanted to get into real estate, but my whole mentality behind real estate was that I thought you needed, you know, 40, 50,000. A lot of capital. Yeah, um, that's what I thought. But when I saw different UC videos, ads, and th different things like that, people started talking about the rental arbitrage market. You could do it with a couple of thousand. You could do it with credit. And it just intrigued my mind because I'm like, I was always looking for a business that doesn't require too much capital. I can leverage my credit. I can have a business that actually runs on systems, and it can be automated for the majority of it. Yeah. Um, and that's when I just kind of took Airbnb series, got into different programs, was watching a lot of YouTube videos just trying to get as much as information I can learn about this business model. Um, short story, you know, got into different programs. Eventually got my first unit like a few months later. Um, 
And then from there, I was like, all right, this is pretty cool. Money comes in. I'm not involved. I'm not at the unit. I'm not checking in and out of guests. Um, money's coming in. Cool. And then eventually I just expanded my portfolio. Short story, eight, nine months later, I have about, you know, six, seven units now under my belt, under my portfolio of arbitrage units. So none of them that I actually own. Um, but I realized, all right, cool. If I can make money, I can automate this process. Money can cash flow guess what? I'm not using my time. Very, very minimal. And I have cash flowing coming in. Now I just got to figure out how do I make more money or how do I get more credit and just keep it rinse and repeating this process right. to eventually get to the point where most people's goals and dreams are, you know, for the average person is like, how can I make an extra 10 to 20,000 a month? And can I do it in a way where I still have time to go enjoy my life and do things that I actually want to do? Um, yeah. So you um, you talked about the Airbnb and how you got into it. Was there somebody specific that taught you the things that you, you learned about it? Or is it all just like self like taught based on? I bought into a program. I'm not going to mention the name. Um, I'll be honest. I paid a couple of thousand. It, I thought I was going to get the mentor to actually help me out. There was no mentorship, like one-on-one -on -one mentorship involved. It was just a program, had some videos and in reality, it helped me like learn information. It had a little structure to it. They had Zoom calls with different coaches. So it's not like it, I didn't get any kind of help, but it didn't give me the help that I really wanted. And someone that like, when I do a business, I think like the best way to do business is just having a mentor, meaning someone when you get stuck along the way, you can actually reach out to them rather than like having to figure out going to videos and stuff. Right. Right. So, There's definitely uh, different, you know, coaching, uh, like uh, opportunities out there, like strategies and all that stuff. Yeah. But I'm with you. Um, I learn more. So on, it's a mixture of things. You know, you could definitely watch videos, do group right. coaching, but also the one-on-one -on -one coaching, I think it's more, more valuable. A hundred percent. It's more tailored towards you, your issues, your concerns and yeah, like that. Um, it shortens the learning curve the most because it's like, okay, well, I'm stuck on this part well, how do I, it's catered towards me. How do I go ask someone that's maybe been through it? Whereas right. like videos is like, it's cool to have information, but having someone that can cater to your situation just makes things like, it shortens the process. Right. Um, so yeah. short story, you got, you know, multiple units running, making pretty decent cash flow. The goal is of course to keep growing it because I'm not where I want to be with it just yet. Um, but, and then eventually, yeah, go ahead. No, but you, you stated you've only been doing it for about eight to nine months, right? Yep, and, a little bit under a year. Yeah, and then, you know, for the most part, you have how many? Uh, like I have about months? six. I have seven. I'm getting rid of one, so that would put me at, like, six. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And then that, obviously, those six, you know, um, you, uh, based on the arbitrage, you know, um, strategy, like, you don't own the property, but it's creating cash flow Correct. towards, you know, towards you, your business, and, and stuff, right? Correct, where, exactly. Yeah. Where are your locations at? I have three in Chicago, two in Houston, um, the Tulum, and then the Arizona. One yeah. in Arizona. What made you choose those markets? Is it because you're in Chicago? It's a good yeah, place. Yes, so that's a good question. A lot of people ask, like, where should you start? And in reality, it's like when you learn the business at the end of the day, like, I could care where I get a unit. Like, I don't have any preference. Mm -hmm. um, the Chicago one, I just found a deal, met up with the landlord. The deal, the deal made sense. So it's like, essentially, wherever a deal makes sense, I'll go get it. And of course, it's probably better not to like, if you're going to get 10 units, you probably don't want 10 units in 10 different states, probably be smarter to narrow between a few different states. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was no like preference. It was just like, all right, I found a good deal. Makes sense. The cool thing about the business model with the Airbnb arbitrage is like, you don't ever really have to be involved. Like my Houston unit. I bought it through a method of turnkey where it was already furnished and it was already approved to do Airbnb, allowed to be listed on Airbnb. And for the first four months of it running, I never had ever went to that unit. I just had a cleaner, I had a handyman, different things. So if you can find a good enough deal, that's where to jump. It doesn't, is it probably better to start where you live because you're familiar with an area? Probably yes. But in reality, I don't think it matters as long as you can know how to research an area and then do the numbers make sense? So typically, like, a good way to think about it is, like, you typically want to aim for 2x the rent, 
Now, can you make less? Can you make more? Yes, 100% is a business. There's nothing guaranteed within the space. But like, for example, I have a unit, one of my top units in Chicago, we have like a three bedroom, one bathroom. It's like a few miles from the downtown downtown area. Um, So it's in a pretty solid area. And then we pay $2,000 rent um, with all the utilities. And then this month in July, which of course, Chicago is very hot in the summer because it's a great city but it's, it's hotter season compared to the winter. Um, this month we're at like 94% occupancy and in revenue it's generated it's about 5,900. So that's okay. almost three X the rent, which is yeah. amazing. And so but generally you want to aim for like two X the rent. That would be a good, good deal. At least two X the rent. And that's um, really what you aim for. Yep. Yeah. Is it, so is that after, obviously like if you're getting about 5,900 for this month, but then you mm-hmm. got to deduct the cost of like the cleaners and all that, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So it, so like, for example, I pay 2000 rent with utilities and then we're in revenue 5,900. Um, and then per turnover, I pay my cleaner as an example, my Chicago one, I pay $50. So I get a good deal on the cleaner. Oh, um, cool. So like in this month, I think we've had a total of nine or 10 guests. So I would subtract um, with, expenses and rent including the utilities i'm probably going to be at like 25 or 2600 and then revenue about 5900 is between all our bookings probably not going to squeeze in anymore since it's fully booked right. um so you'd minus 5900 minus like 26 2500 which would put me at around 33 3400 profit net which is yeah. super solid because the craziest part about it isn't the money which is cool like for this unit it's our top performing one yeah. But it's the fact that I've probably not even put in a couple hours of work this whole month for that unit. Right. That's and the powerful you're thing. You're getting that kind of cash flow for one unit. Yep. So, I mean, that's amazing. That's why, like, you know, with, with the people that I've met who's also doing Airbnb arbitrage that are yeah. making, you know, a ton load because they have their portfolio just grew. Like, for example, one of my good friend, Eric Chen, um, he cash flows about 50 to 60K. And he's got yeah. over 30 units that he arbitraged only in SoCal. And, you know, obviously yeah. SoCal is a, it's a hot market. You hot know, market, people travel. All year, all year, right? And so yeah. he definitely has a great market where he's at. So Yep, for sure. Definitely a lot of great value. So somebody who's like fairly new in the real estate space and – interested in getting into like the Airbnb, like arbitrage specifically what you're doing and you've seen success, mm-hmm. like what like would be your top recommendations for somebody and advice on how they can get started? Yeah. So a lot of people come like, okay, should I do Airbnb arbitrage? Well, I tell them like the number one thing, just like any business, the first thing you have to be want to invest into is the educational part because Airbnb arbitrage is just getting like people are now claiming it's saturated which in reality is never the problem it's it's a problem of people who are going to do this as a professional right so if you're going to try to get into this business the biggest recommendation i tell like pretty much anyone i ever speak with is number one you got to start getting educated whether you want to use free resources which everyone knows information is out there right if you go google or youtube airbnb arbitrage you're going to find enough videos to at least start learning what the heck this is Right. So number one is start getting educated. Number two is free education most times will only take you so far. Thanks. So number two, you got to be willing to invest into a coach or mentor or a course, whatever is comfortable for you. Figure out someone that can help you so you can learn directly from someone who might have more results than you so you can shortcut the learning process. Like for me, it took about four months to get my first unit because I was just going through a course. I didn't have someone like, hey, dude, this is a good deal. Right. I think it might be smart to go on it versus maybe you having a coach or mentor. They're like, all right, this is a good deal. This is what we can expect. It might be a smart move. Well, with that, you're shortcutting, you're shortcutting the learning process a lot. Number two, if you're going to get into the business, understand like what are the pros and what are the cons with this business? Just like any business, there's pros and cons. Mm-hmm. The pros of this business, you can make money that cash flows pretty well. Um, doesn't require a lot of time. You can leverage credit so you can do it pretty much with like very low capital of your own money. The cons is you have potential where you have potential if you don't do it the right way, where you might not get booked to even as much as your rent, which is a potential. Not saying 
that it should happen or it will happen, but it's a potential. So knowing that, you got to be comfortable going into this business. Number two, you got to realize that there's issues that can happen. What do I mean by that? There could be times where your bookings are coming very slow. There could be times where you're dealing with guests that might be a little bit obnoxious where, you know, they might throw a party or something like that. That's typically not the case, but it's like something, if you're going to get into this business, you can't be like, yeah, I'm never going to encounter this. It's, it's, a, it's a possibility. Um, you could have times where you have a building that you get into and there's AC problems. And then now you have to refund guests. Like, And I'm sharing that just from personal experience. So these are little issues that you can run into that you almost have to know, okay, if I'm going to get into these are issues, the pros and cons, and then you just have to outweigh, okay, does the pros outweigh the cons for me to actually pursue, you know, going into this business? Yeah. I mean, those are very, very good points. And I, you know, I say the same thing in any kind of entrepreneurial journey that you have, but that you're going to venture into nothing is promised, right? Being an entrepreneur has high rewards, but it's also got some low points to that you need to understand if you want to venture out into entrepreneurship, whether it's to an Airbnb arbitrage or digital marketing or, you know, other things, right? It's always like an up and down process. And it, same thing in my own experiences when I first launched my business and I'll kind of piggyback the value of having the right coach and the mentor. Mm -hmm. um, I did some, you know, free information, free education through Google, YouTube and all that stuff. But as you mentioned, it only takes you so far, it gives you some generic information, but I really saw the value of having the right business coach and mentor, which ultimately what I did in my recruiting agency, like this guy is uh, built a, you know, seven figure recruiting agency and just leveraging, you know, by himself. And then, you know, a few VAs to help him. And I'm like, you know, I'm a new, you know, entrepreneur. Um, I definitely don't want to do trial and error and take my success, like, like later, like I wanted to achieve that a lot sooner. So hiring a, the right business coach definitely helped me out. And it paid dividends for me, I got my money back, you know, 12 X within the first three months. Oh, wow. Launching, yeah, launching the business. Uh, when I say 12 X, I made in my agency, uh, I started in January. By April, I made about 120K. Um, and I wouldn't have been able to get that kind of success without my business coach, like showing me the blueprint and the road, you know, mm -hmm. how to get started, how to find the right clients, what to say, all of those things, you know. So um, that's how I became a business coach and advisor, too, because I saw the value in that. And my background, uh, Danish, if you didn't know, I served in the Navy first. So um, mm -hmm. I, I've been a leader and uh, have led over 200, more than 250 sailors in my time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always enjoyed being a mentor, seeing somebody apply the things that I teach and mentor and help them with and uh, mm -hmm. seeing them, you know, see the results. That's how I became a, a business coach and advisor as well. And mm -hmm. kind of talk about, you you know, on your profile. Um, which we're going to share obviously later on where they can find you, but you're also doing Airbnb coaching. Is that right? Correct. Yep, could yep. you tell us a little bit more about your program, like what you do for your mentees? Yeah. So pretty much I launched to be very transparent the way I kind of launched it. Like I got my first Airbnb units ever. I think it was December. So maybe eight, nine months ago. Um, and then I just kind of started posting on social media. I'm starting to do this business um, for me, I always like creating, like, once I learn a new business or something, I want to be able to provide value for free first, right? Like Alex Ramosi, um, big business guy, he says, you always want to provide value for free before you ever ask for anything. Right. So um, I kind of started my own Telegram channel and I was like, all right, let me just start throwing out information that I've been learning so far. I'm not selling anything. It's just, let me just throw out valuable things that I've probably learned. And if you've maybe ever wanted to get into this business, I can kind of help and pinpoint you in the right direction, whether that's with videos or whatever, text messages or anything like that. So kind of launched the Telegram for free, started posting information, short story, like a few months later, probably hit about 100, 150 members, um, people inside of that. And then eventually people start asking, like, all right, how do I do this? Can you teach me? This was probably once I got like four units under my belt. 
Yeah. Um, and they were just like, all right, dude, how are you doing this? And the first few people, I started kind of just hopping on calls and telling them, do this, do that. And I was like, all right, man, well, it's taking up my time and a time is money. <laughs> so right. eventually I was like, all right, I'm going to teach the first few people for like a lower cost. So I was like, all right, look, for a thousand, I'll teach you everything I know. Wow. Um, pretty much A through Z. Let me teach you. Okay. How do I go about business funding? How do I about, go about getting my first unit? How do I go about getting turnkey units? A little bit different method from what most people do. How do I go about um, listing the unit the right way? How do I go about hiring cleaners, hiring photographers? And then most importantly, listing the unit with um, a s smart price dynamic strategy. So you actually start getting bookings. Um, did that with a few people, helped my first few students get into their first property within like 30 to 45 days working with me. Um, in fact, I helped them kind of get the units. So like I had found the right unit and right. then kind of just gave it to them, which I could have invested into that unit as well. But I was like, all right, well, these guys trusted to pay me. Let yeah. me just give them that um, give them that unit for them to see if they want to take it. That's awesome, man. And yeah. you've been doing that for how long now? I And then so I started that way just for free. I didn't have like a proper program or anything. It was just like, all right, you pay me this. I'll teach you with like my own mentorship. Um, eventually I was like, all right, well, I got more people hitting me up. Let me take this into more of like a program, right? Let me launch this kind of the more proper way. Um, that's where I kind of, you know, launched the program where now people like the students, they get access to the private telegram with other students where, you know, they can also communicate. Um, they have access to the video. So like I've made a content structure for them to watch that. I'll pretty much hop on like a onboarding call with students right once they get started. And then I host pretty much like every week or every two weeks a call, maybe bring on different people from my network, whether they're in like the credit space or maybe other people that are doing Airbnb um, and different right. things like that. So I launched that honestly less than maybe four to six weeks ago. Nice, man. That's so, pretty cool, man. Definitely uh, wish you yeah. luck on that and uh, scaling that particular business. I see. Like I said, I see a lot of great value in, in coaching and For sure. uh, um, yeah, I certainly uh, wish you all the best on, on that part. And, uh, you For know, sure. you as a business coach as well, um, I didn't start a program. I, I bought a franchise agreement with Carbon Ventures mm -hmm. and what I teach is obviously my own, obviously my own uh, experience as well, but it's really what, uh, Grant Cardone and Brandon Dawson teaches their fellow business, you know, like partners, owner, business owners that mm -hmm. they partnered with. And so that's how, that's what I got certified in, like learning the systems, their resources and the tools that they have that they're mm -hmm. implementing within their own business. So for example, Cardon Ventures just launched in 2019 with zero revenue and four years later, you know, 2023, they're uh, on track to reach about 150 million dollars um in crazy in four years right yeah and it's uh they rapidly scaled their business and it's it's a consulting management you know you know company and uh, yeah. essentially what they do is, is they teach business owners entrepreneurs like earn more revenue using the system that we use within Cardin ventures so mm -hmm. it doesn't even matter whether you're an airbnb like um, business, your uh, construction, HVAC, or digital marketing, all businesses encounter the same issues depending on mm -hmm. your revenue, the size of your business, and also obviously the niche that you're in. But yep. this is business in general. And so you're going to deal with sales, marketing, operations, and the people, you know, hiring the right staff and all that stuff. But that's essentially what we teach other entrepreneurs and business owners. So we have different um i guess strategy depending on what your stage is uh, as an entrepreneur so if uh, for example um i coach you know entrepreneurs that are making you know between a hundred thousand to maybe a million dollars and then i mm -hmm. also do business advising uh to business owners that are hitting multiple seven figures and eight figures already so there's different barriers, there's different issues that they encounter based mm -hmm. on again their their size of business and their revenue and all that stuff. So 
it's it's been great and one of the reasons why i became a partner is because i believe in what they did and i met so mm -hmm. many other fellow business owners and entrepreneurs that have scaled their businesses um and i'm like it, it, for me it was a win-win i get to learn what they do mm -hmm. and i get to uh, apply it to my own businesses that i'm i'm going to be venturing out in and in my current business as well and i get to teach others as well use this same methodology that's made them very very successful so yeah totally yeah. see the value in uh in uh airbnb uh you know coaching and in business coaching in general um kind of leads to my next question you know with what you, you know with you how how are you marketing what you're doing now i know you just started about four or six weeks ago but what is going to be your strategy to market basically your coaching program yeah so i mean i guess number one i'm you know my goal now i'm going to start pushing out a lot more content hire a video editor to you know, just start creating more content because nowadays it's about like having a good, strong personal brand. So people buy from people they can like and trust and respect. Right. So it's kind of just number one, I got to put out more content that I do it like I have a little bit, but I should be throwing out a lot more information that I know about it. Um, making a lot more reels. I actually hired some people to kind of work with me to kind of help build the coaching side, which a lot of it's just getting reaching out, reaching the right audience leads. Right. Um, being on multiple platforms, TikTok, YouTube Shorts was one of what my guys was telling me is a good thing to be on. A lot more reels. Um, and then just having a proper, I guess, framework of like, okay, when you get a lead, how do you kind of approach them about your business? I also have funnels being built out. So a lot of that, you know, is kind of my goal now is like, okay, let me have, I have people working on the back end of my stuff. Let me do my main job, which is kind of just the teaching and coaching side because that's what I enjoy. I'm not big right. on like the lead generation and all that. I was right. like, I'd rather just hire people to help me with that process. Yeah, no, no, same, same here, man. You can't scale a business doing it all on your own. Like, 100%. your time is very valuable, and you can focus on what's more important, and the rest you can just delegate. And uh, yep. whether you hire somebody that's here in the United States or outsourcing it, um, mm -hmm. one of my businesses is I have a a virtual assistant company a sourcing company right now and so we essentially help you know like other business owners like yourself and entrepreneur that hey if you need people that's going to do your cold calling your your leads gen or just people that's going to manage your social media and your editing that's what we provide in my virtual assistant company and uh okay. very very low cost but the reason why i got it started is because i started using va because mm -hmm. of my coach he told me he he put me in game and then I saw the value in what my VAs have been able to bring to my, like to my first business, which is recruiting agency. So all yeah. my recruiters, except for my manager, uh, are all from the Philippines and they're bringing in, you know, revenue like left and right, but yeah. they're professionals in what they do. So my VAs are, uh, have recruiting background who's worked for other you know, companies as a recruiter. So I definitely uh, start, that's one of the reasons why I started my VA company. And um, if you ever go on my page, uh, all that stuff is actually managed by my, my VA media team called Jed Media. They've been mm. pretty amazing and just putting out content um, and they see it, you know, other people are like, hey, you know, I, I love your videos, who does your editing and all that stuff. And just that, the marketing side kind of goes back like, was towards what I was telling you about. It's like, yeah, you're putting out content information, free content mm -hmm. that's valuable to people. Then you'll see other things that you do, like, oh, you know, the way your videos are being edited and all that stuff. That's mm -hmm. amazing. So it brings, it generates more leads in that. Mm -hmm. And then also, yep. like, on my business coaching side now that I, 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 I'm a part of with with Carter Ventures or with 10x, you know, the content that I put out, it, you know, are free. You know, whether it's the inspirational stuff or just like the the meat of certain things, but uh, mm -hmm. it's definitely generated a lot of leads in, into my business as well. So certainly, I I, I agree. You got to go double down, go one hundred percent full, fully into content creation, man. Um, and you have a lot of great value to share others your experiences because you've been an entrepreneur since you were in your teens. You know, yeah. 
whether you learn through trial and error, but you've, you've been it. You understand the culture, the, the environment. So you definitely have a lot of value to put out there. And I'm, I'm looking forward to actually seeing more of your, your stuff um, in, in social media. So that being said, um, <clears throat> excuse me, could you uh, share your uh, social media accounts and you know wh- whichever platform where people could find you? Yeah, so I'm most active on Instagram. It's just Azim, my last name, A-Z-I-M, first name Danish, D-A-A-N-I-S-H. Um, same TikTok. Those are the two main platforms that I'm most active on. And then my goal is to definitely start being more active. Like eventually I want to get into the YouTube videos and stuff like that. But those are probably like my main two, mainly being Instagram. Awesome, awesome, man. Well, I will definitely let you know when we publish this episode. You provide some amazing value add on here, and I appreciate that. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess, uh, you know, last thing is um, I want to ask you, uh, do you have any kind of uh, mentors that you look up to? Not necessarily somebody that you hired or just somebody like a public figure that um, that you definitely like see as somebody that, you could emulate and, and if that you know who who this person is and why do you find them as somebody who's who you look up to yeah it's funny you say that to be honest over the years i've probably watched a lot of entrepreneurs um first it was i used to look up to people that just made a lot of money as i started getting older i started looking up to people that have strong values like yeah. i don't respect people as much as i used to when they make money as much as someone who might have very strong values doing the right stuff um few people that are not like they have a big brand, but maybe not super known. There's a guy named Peter Vug, um, super good entrepreneur, strong values. I've been watching de- recently a lot of Alex Hermosi's content. Right. I've definitely watched Grant Cardone in the past. Don't watch him as much now. Um, there's a lot of people, man. There's I've watched like, you've probably heard of like Luke Belmar is pretty good. Right. Um, these different guys. So a lot of these people that already have big brands, I've watched a lot of their content. Um, there's not... I wouldn't say one specific mentor I probably look up to. It's just some like a combination of a lot oh, of them. These are different ones. Yeah, same here. Ali Sermosi's uh I actually got a chance to meet him at one of the wealth oh, nice. uh, oh, okay. Ali and uh Layla, obviously his wife, they have an amazing story yep. as well. Yeah. Um, good story. A lot of a lot of value that they share. Oh, obviously, yeah, yeah. Um he's actually got a book that's coming out, uh hundred million dollar uh leads. Leads, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh have I, you read his first book? Uh no, not yet, but he promoted it um uh, for sure. But uh, I I have a bunch of books that I'm I, like that I still have that I'm reading, but I'm certainly uh I put a um you know, on the wait list on his next book coming up. So mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to get the other one as well. But uh yeah, Alex is a pretty down to earth type of guy, man. I love his uh the way he shares yeah. stories and uh, shares experiences. But yeah, man. Well, Danis, thank you so much, bro. I spent a lot of your time here. Um, I appreciate you hopping on. And uh, again, I'll keep you posted when we get this published. And then uh, I'll share some of your content um, broken down by my team. Chop it up. So that way you can share it to your uh, to your platform and uh, help market your brand, man. But uh, yeah, I wish you all the best, brother. And um, but yeah, you have anything else for the for the audience before we go? Uh, not much, man. I would just say, just keep going at it. There's going to be ups and downs in the road, especially with entrepreneurship. At the end of the day, you just got to have a vision and know eventually oh, with hard work and determination, eventually you'll get there. I appreciate awesome, you man. having me on, brother. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. So to my audience, who I know you are all brand new because I just launched this podcast, but uh, I appreciate you hopping on to here. And if you find value into this, please like, comment, subscribe. And also please share it to others that could potentially find value in what we're doing here. But other than that, Danis, thanks so much, man. And looking forward to seeing more of your success. And if you ever need anything, man, you know where to reach me as well, bro. But you other too. Than that, take care, man. Thanks so much. All right. All right, guys. That was an amazing uh, episode. Uh, learning about Danish, his entrepreneurial journey, his experience as a young you know, teenager that started, you know, cell phone flipping. Uh, for me, um, I was the same way, not necessarily in my teens, but more so in my 20s. I started uh, uh, flipping sneakers as like many other people. So right now I currently have over, I still have over 200 pairs of sneakers. And um, 
I used to sell a lot of it. I would make maybe, I'd say maybe like between four to six grand a month, uh, which was big back then. But I just didn't, you know, have the time to continue on doing that. But uh, I'm on to more and better things. But, you know, that's that was the start of my entrepreneurial journey when I first started um, and didn't really even know I was doing it. You know, I just wanted to make extra money to uh, buy more shoes and it just kind of turned into a small business. Even up to today, um, my, I have a, an eBay account where I sold all my shoes. I have 100% uh seller rating on there and i've had that since 2006 so but yeah nonetheless guys thank you so much i appreciate it and uh watch out for the next episode take care bye-bye